Hi, welcome. Natural gas use is increasing in many parts of the world. Today we're going to use a systems perspective to understand what's going on and also to what extent it's helping or hurting when it comes to reaching the goal of addressing climate change. This video is going to offer you two things. The first is insights into the complex system of the interplay between natural gas, the energy system, and the climate system. And secondly, an example of how we use systems thinking and system dynamics in order to understand how to make a complex system work better. Here we go. With natural gas and climate, the one part of the story that we hear over and over in advertisements and the media is this. Natural gas is a bridge to a stable climate. There's so much more going on though, however. We want to think about the whole system and all the interdependencies. Talking about it that way is like understanding an elephant just by touching its leg. We need to see the whole. Let's start with the thinking behind the idea that natural gas is a bridge to a stable climate. Let's play out the whole map. Natural gas burns more cleanly than coal. So with the natural gas technical innovation rate going up, it reduces the price of energy from gas. This boosts investment in gas infrastructure, drilling, mining, refining, exporting, burning, which displaces the investment in higher carbon density coal infrastructure. Less coal burning means less CO2 emissions, thus improving future climate instability. But too often the thinking stops right there, as if one cause just has one effect. Let's explore some other pieces of the story. This one actually helps the first part. More investment in gas increases economies of scale, which means gas costs are reduced and complementary assets like supporting industries and technologies, policies, business models, infrastructure, all these things, they spread around the world. This in turn reduces price even more, creating a reinforcing feedback loop or a virtuous cycle that builds upon itself, helping the climate even more. We'll see this economies of scale dynamic in other places. Gas can also serve as a backup for renewable energy like wind and solar, which aren't quite as consistent as the gas, allowing for more renewable capacity, helping even more. This is even more good news for the climate. But though these are beneficial dynamics, there are other parts which aren't so great. Sometimes the media reports and advertising out of the industry stops there. What are those other relevant parts to this complex system? There's only so much investment in energy to go around. So gas also competes with wind and solar for capital investments. More gas, less demand for renewables. Less investment in renewables. And less renewable energy replacing investments in coal infrastructure, therefore less reducing of coal emissions around the world. We made this set of links in red to show that they don't help the climate. We'll see evidence of this all over the real world right now. In this way, the good, that is gas, can be the enemy of the best, which is zero carbon renewable energy. Less renewables could mean less learning capacity, less economies of scale, and less cost reduction if competition weakens this reinforcing loop. This reinforcing feedback loop is the same dynamic we saw earlier, but now is applied to renewable energy. The renewables learning loop, or this economies of scale loop, is very, very important. When renewables don't get some market share in one year, it's not just the loss of a little bit of market share. It's losing the capacity of the industry to learn and reduce its costs on its own. That it starves that reinforcing dynamic. This is really important as we think about the overall complex system that we're trying to affect. Indeed, energy economists believe that every doubling of renewables capacity, every time it doubles in size, the industry gets a 20% drop in its costs. This is called the progress ratio. And whenever we starve the capacity of the industry to grow, we don't get that cost reduction. Gas has other impacts on water systems and geology. 
non-climate environmental impacts. These non-climate environmental impacts could be addressed through breakthroughs in environmental safety and impact like better technology, management, regulation, and enforcement. Another troubling effect for the climate is the rebound effect. Cheap gas means the energy price is lower. This boosts energy demand up just a little bit. More demand means more carbon dioxide emissions. The mining and distribution of natural gas leaks methane, a potent greenhouse gas. These methane emissions then undo some of the benefits of gas replacing coal. Also, if gas is cheap, there is less incentive to reduce leakage, resulting in an increase in methane leakage over time per unit. Of course, better management of gas mining and distribution through breakthroughs in environmental safety and impact can reduce the methane leakage. Over time, innovation could also lead to natural gas powered transportation, compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas vehicles, reducing oil use, and reducing CO2 emissions more. And similar to the economies of scale loop that we've added in other places, gas powered transportation improves through learning and through complementary assets. Most of these investments don't go away quickly when the next change happens. They are locked in for many years. For example, it may take decades for a city that invests in a natural gas transit system to transition to one that's renewable energy powered, if ever, without the right incentives. There's a lot of lock-in that really matters here. Eventually, innovation could lead to carbon capture and storage, which would help, although this technology is not expected for several decades. CCS, carbon capture and storage, will get less expensive through learning and economies of scale. Much of the resulting infrastructure has long lifetimes, leading into lock-in for decades. We're putting boxes around many of these areas with long-lived infrastructure. So the decisions we are making on natural gas today will have long-lived implications. Will the benefit of displacing coal use today with natural gas still be beneficial for the climate if we are locked in to using the same natural gas in the coming decades? This is the kind of question that looking at the big picture allows us to a better answer. Wow, look at this mess we just made. How could anyone possibly simulate this in their head? Let's consider for a moment how much of this complex system that gets included in most media reports about natural gas and climate. Maybe just this much, this shaded area. Low carbon natural gas displaces coal and helps climate. That's all we really hear. But that is just part of this system. Maybe others focus on other parts. Gas boom is about methane leakage or maybe about the backup of renewables. But we really should be doing all we can to consider this broader system. But how can we consider the overall system? You see that there are so many feedback effects and delays and lock-in of infrastructure that make it really difficult for us to simulate this complex system with what we call our mental model, with the model we use every day here between our ears. How do we do it? Here at Climate Interactive, we build simulation models to see the strength of these different effects and how they play out over time. Then we build them into simulations like En-ROADS, where we can see what kind of interventions would create very different futures, such as focusing on renewable energy, on energy efficiency, on population, carbon price, and the various other interventions we could imagine. Taking a broader systems view when we think about natural gas and the climate is absolutely essential, particularly because it's such a complex system with so many interdependencies. So that puts out the challenge to you all and to us all. How can we take a similarly appropriate wide view, see the big picture as we look at the challenges we face? Think of the side effects or things that we call side effects as we chart out our paths to success when it comes to climate change and other issues. So there's the challenge, thinking broadly in whole systems. Let's go do it.